much of what we do is about communication and about how we integrate knowledge into that communication flow. It's about how we get our research from being, you know, studying in the, the, the lab out into the world in real ways. And this is the kinds of things that we're trying to facilitate. The stuff that George is doing, that is so cutting edge. My name is George Townsend and I'm a professor in the computer science department, but I also do research on brain-computer interfaces. Ever since I began to learn about computers, I had a, a passion to be able to interface different things to computers, starting with you know, lights and motors and speakers and things. And once you've done all of that, because it's been done many times, uh, you have the question left, well, what else can I interface a computer with? And the, sort of the, the, the final goal would be, well, the human brain. <laughs> uh, these are devices that allow a person to communicate uh, with a computer or to operate a computer uh, without using any muscular control. So in other words, using only their thoughts. Primarily it's used for people that have disabilities that are completely paralyzed, uh, particularly people with Lou Gehrig's disease or ALS. I'm Kathy Bogart, I'm the Director of Marketing Communications at Orion. I get to tell the stories of some people who are doing cool things, but today I got to see it in action. You'll be staring at a, a screen full of letters on a computer screen and they'll flash in various groups. And if you wish to select a particular letter, you'll stare at it, waiting for it to flash. When it finally flashes, it's an event that's meaningful to you and you've been waiting for it. And it's always a bit surprising because you never know quite when it's going to happen. If the computer knows when you produced this response, then it can tell what letter you were looking at because it knows when each letter was flashing. We can't even imagine the things that we might be doing someday that this research could lead to. It's all part of the knowledge economy, the innovation economy that Ontario is trying to foster, that Orion needs to support. I have collaborators all over the world, and we exchange data files and emails and occasionally Skype and so on, and of course we depend on a good network to be able to do that. Uh, the, particularly with uh, EEG recordings, which is what BCI uses generally, uh, those are huge, huge files and uh, it, it's nice to be able to snap them back and forth between remote locations. To get that big education, we've got to be able to network at very high speed. Uh, it used to be, I didn't know what my colleagues were doing in Europe for months. Uh, we might send mail, we might use a boat. Now, within five minutes, I know what my colleagues uh, in Europe are doing. I can contact somebody at Oxford and I can say, hey, by the way, I hear you were doing some work. I heard that yesterday. Everything's changing. Orion is helping to facilitate that. It's more than just research, it's happening right now. So it makes it all worth it. What you're working on is going to really help somebody and that gives you the drive to kind of push it further and, and, and do the best you can for the people that are going to benefit from it.